Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about um, this card. So, uh, what do I need to say about this card? This card, no one hit on. I, I've never, I've not read an article where the person was like, buy this card, pre-order this card. Uh, this card is good. I have not read anything of that nature until the card actually became seven to eight dollars good. Again, I will preface this by saying, maybe the card is not seven, eight dollars right now. It could be more, it could be less, but at some point it was that amount. And you can go on TCG Player, you can check the graphs and see that this is true. I'm not making the price up. And I did check the price today. Uh, what you gotta realize about this card is it is deceivingly good. Um, it is, when you look at it, you're like, okay, fine. I get a 2-2 two, two for four, I get a 1-1 one, one for two, and then it replaces itself. But it also gets itself bigger for a very low incremental uh, value. Secondly, there's an artifact deck that is running these cards as well as other cards that needs artifacts in play and that is helping its price. But the fact that this card is around $8 right now, I want to say it's $7.83 as of this recording, just shows me like how ridiculous this concept of uh, you know picking like the correct card is because I don't know if anyone's going to pick this card. And no one has picked this card, and no one picked this card. Like, uh, maybe somebody did, I don't know, let me know. But like, from what I've heard, and what I've read, no one picked this card. And why would they? It was a boat card, and why would they pick this card? It was a boat card. So the whole idea of, uh, the whole concept and notion that there can be experts in this field who are so good at this, uh, just is surprising to me that it's still... Uh, being portrayed that way where in fact it's just about luck it's absolutely about luck if you so happen to love this card and how do you know that a deck is going to be made around this card and artifacts and you know these little one one flyers no you, you don't know that you don't know that because the only the one one flyers are all in one set so it's not like oh okay previous set there was a lot of one one flyers in Kanja Tarkir artifact Flyers and cards, Tarkir, the artifacts were incredibly amazing there, and now we just need you know a little bit more support. No, this is a whole another archetype from one set. So very difficult to predict that the archetype would actually be viable. Not even just like tier one viable. I'm talking about like tier two, casually FNM viable. These cards are highly. When I go to my locals, these are the cards that trade. The planeswalkers don't trade well. The um, you know, the Funder Break regents are not trading well. The Funder, anything from uh, back in the O set that's going to rotate is not trading well. But this card is trading like hotcakes. Like, I can't, I only have one copy of this card from like the five or six copies I pulled. And I kept pulling this card over and over again. I was like, oh, this card sucks. This card sucks. But it turns out this is the card that people want to play with. And it can be played in any deck. So not just the blue uh, Spy Network deck. Um, this card is incredible. When I look at it from a MTG Finance standpoint, I say to myself, this is the gold, this is the card that reminds me a lot of Underworld Connections. Um, it will be played. It absolutely will be played. It has reached 7 to $8. It's pretty much $8 right now. Can it reach any more? I don't know. Um, a lot of people are, want to build this deck, and a lot of them are casual people, and those are the easiest to trade to because they are willing to give up. Um, they're wo willing to over trade for this card if it needs to be. And right now, the demand is so high that like Iomi was able to keep one copy, and that's not common. So typically, I can play. I keep a play set, and then like I trade away whatever. But the at eight dollars right now in trade. I cannot like be like okay well I'll keep my place at no I'm not I don't have the deck I'm doing the Friday night magic um, journey into whatever so I'm kind of committed to a deck already and uh, this card is just so good um, and so playable so splashable in every deck that I can see it I cannot I can see it going down to five dollars but even five dollars it pre-orders for what a quarter like it's bulk like it used to be bulk and now it's not and that is the whole story of you know when people ask me how do i pick cards and how to just pick it based on what you like um if you don't pay for advice like if you're paying for advice 
then you're probably not like if you paid like let's say you pay like fifty dollars a year to like get advice well fifty dollars a year like how many copies of this is that like is it like 250 copies of it <laughs> man but i've had 250 copies of this um and yeah but these are cards that i will honestly tell you i never like i didn't even consider of pulling the trigger of these cards um there's some cards that i could have been like okay cool like desecration demon i was looking at it but i wanted underworld connections better but this card was not like one of those cards where i was like okay i'm sitting at tcg player i have a ton of them in stock i'm not i'm considering pulling the trigger and then i don't do it this card was never on my radar at all and i don't know who said this card was good or it would be like eight dollars good or even five above five dollars good um but yeah, I mean, that's what it is. So, so my best advice for you guys, and I'll talk about this more in Rally the Ancestors, um, is pick cards that you want to pick. And that is the most important part of this whole, to have fun with it. Bye, guys.